Happy birthday, America. You're turning 244 years old this year. Very impressive. You're about 55 years older than the world's oldest tortoise. But you've got some weird looking creatures living inside you. I mean, have you even been to a Walmart lately? So for this July 4th, I thought it would be fun if we salute five of America's weirdest, strangest creatures. Buckle up, America. We've talked before about some of my strangest animals, but I thought it'd be fun to talk about some animals that are out there in the world, and I obviously don't own these animals, but they're still super bizarre. I'm joined today by a very cool animal that'll probably feature in an upcoming episode of Our Strangest Animals. This is Kali, my Eastern Indigo, and they are actually the longest snake species native to the United States. And I figure while we're talking about some cool, weird American animals, why not have the longest snake native to the United States? Internationally, America already has some pretty famous, weird-looking animals like opossums and porcupines and trash pandas, but I'm sure quite a few of the animals on this list many of you have not even heard of. In fact, one of the animals on this list I didn't even know was a thing until I started doing research for this video. First up, we head to the American Midwest, home of very iconic North American animals like bison and grizzly bear. And amidst all that American megafauna and scenic landscapes, you get one of the weirdest looking birds out there. The greater sage grouse is kind of a weird looking bird, but it has one of the strangest flexes in the whole world of birds, and that's saying something. Because like when peacocks are trying to show off, they fan out their tail feathers, and when birds of paradise are trying to show off, they'll like do singing and elaborate dances, but sage grouse, nah puff out those air sacs. And what is, like I said, a very, very weird flex, these roosters on steroids have a very unique way to show off. What they'll do is they'll strut, they'll fan their tail feathers out, they'll make this loud popping sound, and then they puff out their chest, revealing these giant bulbousy yellow air sacs that poke through the feathers to attract a lady. As they strut and bob, these air sacs will bounce, and that looks appealing, apparently, to someone. Now, not only do these males have these weird dance-offs, but they show their moves in what is probably nature's closest equivalent to a dance arena. Dance-off, bro! Me and you! They have a complex mating setup, so they typically meet on the same breeding grounds every year, and they form what's called a lek, which is an aggregation of males that'll do these big, competitive, weird displays in order to get a mate. Each male gets his own little bubble in this range, and the dominant males get their bubbles right in the center, while the lesser males usually have to kind of hang out on the outer rim. Females come to these arenas once the hierarchy has been established, and the dominant male can get lucky enough to mate with up to three quarters of them. And unlike many of their cousins, they lack that muscular gizzard that helps break down tougher, harder things to eat like seeds, so they usually eat softer stuff like leaves, grass, mostly sagebrush. Next up is an animal you all probably know very, very well, but this is not an earthworm like the ones you'd find in your backyard. This worm is from Alaska and it is called Alaskan Bullworm! No, this is called the ice worm and it's a close cousin of the earthworm, but instead of digging around in the dirt up in Alaska, you'll find them in snowfields and even glaciers. It's a very small, darkly colored annelid and it maxes out at about one to three centimeters in length. They're found in southern and central Alaska, down the coast, into Washington and northern Oregon. And they can survive temps as low as zero degrees Celsius. Wait, this is for America. That is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, you lazy, non-standard unit-using heathens. They have little bristles running down the length of their body, and this helps them traverse through the densely packed ice crystals easily. And if it gets too warm out, and by too warm, I mean something like what we here in New York would consider a mild winter day, like somewhere in the 30, 40 degree Fahrenheit temp range, then that would be too warm for these guys. They like it as cold as possible, and that could literally make their body melt. A single glacier could be home to billions of ice worms, and because these worms can't migrate, each glacier will have isolated populations. There's actually a massive week-long festival called the Ice Worm Celebration in Cordova, Alaska that has been going on annually since 1961. 
Spoiler alert, but there are going to be no reptiles on this list. I know Adam, who has a buttload of reptiles and does reptile videos basically every week, doing a top five without a reptile on it. But this next animal has a reptile in the name, and that counts enough, I guess. The alligator gar is exactly as it sounds. You take a giant fish, mix it with an alligator. It's basically a big old torpedo swimming through the water with sharp teeth. Gars, of which the alligator gar is the largest of the seven species, are a very weird group of fish. They're called living fossils or primitive fish because their group has fossil records dating back to the early Cretaceous period over 100 million years ago, with not a whole lot of changes in the meantime. Morphologically, they've held on to quite a few prehistoric features their ancestors had, such as a spiral valve intestine, which is a digestive system part you find in another famous group of prehistoric fish, the sharks. Also like sharks, they have a skeleton made up of a good bit of cartilage and not bone. They also have the ability to not only just breathe in water like just about all fish, but they can also breathe air. And this means that they can survive in smaller bodies of water that most fish would suffocate in. Alligator gar scales are also not like most other fish scales. Alligator gars have what's called ganoid scales, and these are basically bone-like diamond-shaped scales. Now, a few other fish do have these, like the equally bizarre sturgeon, but while the sturgeon has these scales in rows enlarged into like giant bone armor plating, Alligator gars have extra tough armored scales coating their entire body. All of these scales also have a serrated edge and are nigh impenetrable to predator teeth. These scales are so tough that historically humans have used these for things like arrowheads, armor, and even farming equipment. Now, like I said, this is a very large freshwater fish. They're the second largest in the United States. They're one of the largest worldwide. Supposedly, this fish can hit 9 to 10 feet, but the largest one on record is the world record holder, and it clocks in at just over 8 feet long and 327 pounds. They also have, unlike other gar species, a dual row of fairly large sharp teeth in that upper jaw to help catch and hold on to prey. Speaking of, this fish does not just eat fish. This fish is so big, it can take down pretty big vertebrate things like waterfowl, small mammals, reptiles, basically anything hanging out on the surface of the water and not expecting a colossal ancient fish hanging out underneath them to eat them. A few of them have also been found with boat engine parts in their stomach. It's so good. Also, their eggs are toxic, so no alligator gar caviar. That rhymed. For number two, we're gonna stay in the water for the only quote unquote herp on this list, the hellbender salamander. This massive two and a half foot salamander has evolved very little over the last 160 million years. To put that into perspective, 160 million years ago was when the first flighted mammals first started to evolve and stegosaurs were still roaming what is now the Rocky Mountains. These giants can grow to be over four pounds and are clearly America's largest amphibian. They're fully aquatic and they spend most of their lives under smooth rocks and fast moving waterways from here in New York all the way down into the south and then out west as far as Missouri. Now, most amphibian species have a general lifespan of five to 10 or 15 years, depending on the species. These guys have been shown to live over 50 years in captivity and that puts it in line with several large lizard species like iguanas and Komodo dragons. Like we mentioned with our axolotls in our Strangest Animals Part 2 video, many salamander species can regrow limbs. This species, however, no regrowability at all. Like most amphibians, they breathe through their skin. They abstract the oxygen from the water that they're in. Hellbenders, though, actually have an extra set of folds that run laterally down the body, and this actually adds surface area to their body to help with this breathing. It does, however, make them look like a decomposing banana in the sun. Now, hellbenders do have lungs, but they did an experiment like half a century ago where they surgically removed a hellbender's lungs and it actually kept breathing in the water just fine through the skin, no lungs or anything. They don't really move much. They tend to have a home territory of less than a thousand square feet. So researchers have come back 10, 20 years later and still found the same salamanders under those rocks. This is a salamander with some punch to it too, because unlike most amphibian species, these guys actually have sharp little teeth. So they will break the skin if you do get a little love nip from them. They have an insanely strong sense of smell and are very good at detecting movement under the water. They actually have a lateral line in them like fish do to sense minor movements in the water from prey like crayfish. 
They also reproduce kind of like fish and very unlike most other salamander species because they do external fertilization. The female lays her eggs and the male comes over, swims over them, deposits his sperm, and then chases her out of the nest for him to guard them. Perhaps my favorite thing about them though is all of their nicknames. They have a whole bunch of very loving titles, things like the Snot Otter, the Devil Dog, the Allegheny Alligator, the Mud Cat, and my personal favorite, the Lasagna Lizard. For number one, one of the strangest looking mammals, not just in America, but on the planet, take a pinkish kind of skinny little mouse weasel thing, give it long ears, long tail, a long nose, give it a turtle shell, and you get the nine banded armadillo. They're the only armadillo species native to the US and they can't roll up into a ball like some of their cousins can. The special armor plating covering the majority of their back is actually made up of dermal bone that is covered in these overlapping epidermal scales called scutes, like what a Taurus has. And these, despite having this awesome armor, these little dudes are actually pretty fast and much more likely to run away or quickly dig a trench and lodge themselves in their snugly while arching and stiffening their back to make them super hard to get out. They're also surprisingly good swimmers and can hold their breath for six minutes. So they'll either be scurrying along the bottom while running away, if it's shallow water, or they can actually inflate their intestines and it'll help them float. These armadillos would be amazing at playing The Sims because they can keep track of and manage over a dozen different burrows throughout their pretty big home range. And they'll mark these burrows as theirs using special scent glands in their feet, their nose, and their eyelids. These little critters also know how to repopulate because over a 15 year lifespan, a single female can pop out almost 60 babies. They're actually pretty cold tolerant for a species that originated in South America and then moved up through Central America into the Southeast US. They've expanded greatly just over the last 100 years, now being found on occasion in Nebraska and Southern Illinois. One particular study predicts their range will eventually end as far north as Southern New York and Massachusetts. These little conquerors will soon control us all. Ironically, it'll be kind of funny because if they end up in mass, they are the state animal of Texas. Perhaps one of the strangest things about this species is the reproduction itself. When a mom gets pregnant, she can delay implantation of the egg for two to three months. And then during gestation, a single zygote is implanted, but over the two to three months, the zygote actually splits into four identical embryos attached by a shared placenta. At birth, all of these babies weigh almost exactly the same. And when they're born, the carapace, their armor is actually still soft. It takes two to three weeks to harden up. And lastly, probably the strangest fact about this species, they can get leprosy. To my knowledge, the only two species that can get leprosy are the nine banded armadillo and us. Now it's not super common, but they actually have proven to be very beneficial for the medical study of leprosy. And again, it's very, very, very rare, but them transferring it to humans through contact could potentially happen. So when our armadillo overlords move throughout the entire country, just don't pick them up. So those are five of America's strangest animals. I will be doing a part two to this video at some point, probably next July 4th. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that or any of the other future animal videos I post every week. Comment down below which of America's animals is your favorite. Like the video if you learned something. Thanks for tuning in and I will catch you later.